Hi, I'm Renee. And I'm Katie. And today we're here to talk about OCD. Am I? I don't know. Really <laughs> Having OCD can be difficult, but there are ways to cope. Katie, can you tell us a bit more about what OCD is? OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. So ob obsessions are basically thoughts or things that come into your mind that you don't want to have there and they keep coming again and again. So that can be a thought or an image or even an urge or a feeling. And the compulsive bit, compulsions, are things that people do to basically try and make themselves feel better or get rid of um, the obsessions or the feelings that come with the obsessions. Can you tell us a bit more about the different types of OCD? So OCD can come in lots and lots of different themes. The main ones are, that people usually know about are things like uh, checking, so checking locks, checking taps, um, which is usually about people who worry about something going wrong or causing some kind of harm. Uh, and another big one is contamination. So people who worry about either causing harm to others or getting ill themselves. So they'll be really worried about germs and often that comes with lots of cleaning. Um, but like I said, there are so many different themes. Essentially, you could have obsessive compulsive disorder with any kind of theme. Commonly, you see people doing these behaviours, these compulsions, like washing or checking yeah. or re redoing something, repeating things is very common. But also people do behaviours that are inside their head. So things like counting something, saying a little prayer, doing something that tries to make themselves feel better. Can you tell us a bit more about what that actually feels like for someone that's suffering from it? So on a day-to-day -day basis, it probably feels like a bit of a struggle or a bit of a battle because you'll have maybe what you want to do and what another bit of your brain is telling you that you need to do or you have to do right. in order to have things be somehow okay. So people often really experience this kind of push-pull, push-pull, which is really frustrating for people. It can be incredibly upsetting and interfere with making friends, doing your schoolwork, going out, having fun. Um, so, I mean, it just feels very limiting for people. Yes. So typically, do, do people always know when they have OCD? Or? I think that's part of the problem. People often don't realise when they have OCD because what's happening is maybe what is, seems like a relatively normal but not nice thought or feeling or urge and it's sort of almost disguising itself as... as being part of you. How would you go about getting help if you did have OCD or thought you had OCD? Your first port of call is probably to go and see your GP and talk to them, discuss what you think your symptoms are and explain a bit about what's going on for you and they can probably help you with a diagnosis or send you on to somebody else who could uh, do that. It can be quite scary going to your doctor. I think one thing about going to see your doctor is you could maybe try talking to someone about it before talking it through um, either you know with a friend or a parent or you could call Childline and talk it through with them um, and it's, you'd want to just feel a bit prepared so you might want to keep a little diary about what's going on for you so that when you do get to see the doctor you're not kind of lost for words and I know that on the Childline website there's a mood tracker that can be used so so you can sort of see exactly what's happening and that can be a really useful tool and I think you have to remember that when you feel scared and these things are scary that you go and see you know the GP or health professional you know they're on your side they're there because they want to help you to get better. What self-help um, options are available or, or you know, strategies that people could use? So there's, uh, the first thing that someone really needs to do is to understand what OCD is. There's also loads of people, like, uh, people who have suffered from OCD now who are um, vlogging and blogging and tweeting. So there's much more of a community out there so that you don't have to feel alone. And then there's several um, OCD charities in the UK who also provide support and help and guidance and so there are lots of different ways that you can help yourself. So what three things could you do to support a person suffering from OCD? So the big answer to this is about making sure you're supporting the person and not supporting the OCD. So I'll explain what I mean by that is so rather than just doing things 
for that person that they find difficult, say if that's closing the door or mm -hmm. checking the lights are off or um, telling them that everything will be okay. That's really all supporting the OCD. And what we really want to do is support the person. The second thing is just to really try and understand what it feels like for that person, mm -hmm. um, what they're going through and to, to listen and to maybe learn a little bit about OCD so that they feel that you are understanding what's happening for them without judging them. And then the final thing, which I think is incredibly important, is about doing other things with that person that they're going to find enjoyable. You know, so whether it's getting out and doing some kind of sport or some hobby or going someplace. Mm -hmm. You know, OCD doesn't go away when you walk out the house generally or, you know, when you go and do something. But the more you're engaged, the more you enjoy something, the less loud your OCD is going to be. Thank you so much for coming today, Katie. You're really welcome. I'm always really happy to try and help people understand a little bit more about OCD. If you would like further information, please take a look at the links in the description box. See you guys.